Hello, I'm Christina with The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. And today, I'm heading to my booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall in Lincoln Park, Michigan. And I'm going to show you what I do before I do a booth overhaul. Wait a minute, let's rewind. And if you follow my channel, you probably remember about a year ago, I put out a very similar video. But a lot has changed since then. And in that video, I didn't actually walk you through my booth and tell you how I figure things out. So we're going to do this again, and I've learned some things, and I hope it will help you. But if you want to check out the other video, feel free to click on the link above. Okay, let's continue. The first technique we're going to talk about is what you want to do if you're trying to improve your stacking ability for your display. At Plaza Antiques, there are some masters with stacking, and their booths always look very good and pulled together. I've also found a lot of inspiration on Pinterest lately, and I'm hoping to add more stacking and improve my stacking game in my booth. And it all starts with a booth walkthrough. I look at every piece. This piece is an old radio and record cabinet. It is heavy. And so this is what I call a display piece. You can't stack it on top of anything. And because of the radio in the top, nothing will stack on it. Up ahead, I see a sturdy base table. This is a base, perfect for stacking. You need these in your booth if you want to stack items. In this walkthrough, I'm really only looking at furniture items and large smalls that can be stacked. Over here is a bookshelf, and this can work as a base, but I call it a small base. You can put it on the ground, it doesn't take up much room, and you can also stack it on top of a larger base. Do you see the other small base? There it is with this enamel table, and this chair is definitely a stackable piece. We also have another base. The drawer cubby, of course, is stackable. We have another medium base underneath it. Are you enjoying this video? If so, take a second to click the like button and subscribe. Also, if you click the bell, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. It really helps me to continue to grow my channel to help others to salvage, repurpose, and create. We'll come back to the outer edge of my booth, but let's look to my left. This table is a medium base, but because of the decorative top on it, you might not want to stack it too high. We also have some stackable pieces and medium bases. And crates are absolutely wonderful stackables. I also have this toolbox that would be great to stack. The blue chest of drawers is an excellent base. We have some stackables, of course, on top. And now we're making our way to my salvage area. And I have to tell you, when you are doing this walkthrough, sometimes you just get huge inspiration. And that happened here. Stay tuned. In a little bit, I'm going to tell you my plans for this space. In doing this video for the channel, I realized that shooting a video is extremely helpful. What I used to do before was walk through, write everything down, and after, take a bunch of still shots. The video seems to work better for me, and I really can see all parts of my booth. If you are visual like I am, taking a video might be a good idea. The nice thing about the video is that you can shoot the video pretty quickly and then get out of your booth and work on the rest. So if your booth is really busy, you might just want to shoot the video and go home and do the rest of the planning. Here is a look of my final list. And then at the bottom of the list, I also will do some rough sketches. I even sometimes will draw a quick sketch of the piece so that I can keep certain dressers or items straight. Do whatever makes it easy for you. If you're doing the walkthrough, make sure you have a tape measure. So if you get hit with inspiration, you can measure to make sure everything will fit before you go home and work on your planning. Stay tuned to find out what my big plan is and what I'll be doing in my booth in the future. 
Obviously, the paint and the green display are display pieces. They're not really moving or stackable. You may be surprised, but this bookcase is a display. Nothing can really easily stack on top of it, and it's too heavy to go on top of anything else. Over here, we have a lot of small cabinets and dressers and end tables. They all function as medium bases. I hope as you're watching this video that it's getting a lot easier for you to recognize the displays, the bases, the small and medium bases, and the stackables. It really is key to good display. Ah, the suitcase, another one of my favorite stackables. They can be used on the ground, on top, and even as risers. And just when you thought you figured everything out, we run into this piece. It is a desk. What is it? Is it a base? Is it a display? I consider this a display because you can't stack anything on top of it and it takes up floor space. We have an obvious base and a medium base here that are not attached. As we walk through, see what else you can spot. Hopefully this little exercise will help you with your own display. Oh, we're getting to a tricky one. What about that rocker over there? What would you call it? You can stack it if you have a base wide enough, but many times if you don't, you have to consider it like a display. It will take up floor space. The fireplace also is considered a display and will need to stay on the floor. But the white piece, we have a base and stackable on top. Okay, we have a few more items. You should be able to figure these out. They're pretty simple. Little end tables like these that are bookcases are so great for so many uses. You can use them as a base. You can stack them. You can put them on the ground as a medium base. These are great to have little sturdy pieces in your booth. I also hope you're paying attention to all of the crates that I have. Actually, the crates on the top of the piece here are nailed together in that display permanently, but you can put crates anywhere to hold lots of items. They're very handy to have in your booth. We have an obvious display and we have a base. And chairs are great. They can always be used to stack to save room on floor space. Another display and up on top that mannequin is a great stackable can also be used on a floor display too. Spools are very handy too. The one on the bottom is a great base. I have a smaller one on top. If you are in the biz, find these, keep these. They can be used so many ways. And then, of course, we have another crate. In this other section, we have the green display. And we have a lot of medium bases and stackables. Chairs, if they're small enough, always stack well, but larger chairs are a little bit tricky. I hope this is helping you kind of figure out what things are, so the next step will be the design. Okay, test your skill on these pictures. Can you see the stackables, the medium bases, the bases and the displays? What was my big inspiration that I discovered while I was walking through my booth? And before I tell you, I want to thank you again for kind of encouraging me to make this video because now I've discovered an even easier way to plan future booth displays. And I'm not in my booth that much, which is an added bonus too because I'm not disrupting shoppers. As I walked through my booth, you obviously noticed the salvage area is a hot mess. I mean, there's salvage everywhere. I've been extremely lucky lately to get a whole bunch of really good salvage and I'm running out of room. So that needs my attention. My new plan is to move all the salvage together and put them all in one spot. The new location will be this area and I will be adding in this table with all of the crates to help me sort and organize the salvage. You can look for the new salvage display coming soon and I will be making a video on that if you would like. If you want me to make a video on the whole process, drop a comment down below. The other thing I have planned is as I was walking around thinking about my stacking displays, I realized to have a good stack display, you sometimes need a lot of floor space. You do. 
And the way I've set things up, including this new display, I just built this year. In fact, if you want to see the whole video, you can click on the link above and see how I built it. But I think it has to move. And so I'm going to be moving it out to the front of my booth space. And I have lots of reasons for it that I will go into great detail at a later date. But I think this not only will give me some more space to build some better displays, but it's also going to change up my booth a little bit for the new year too and get customers to come and check out all of those changes. By making this video, it was a win-win. I learned I could use a video instead of taking pictures that gets me in and out of my booth quickly and it gives me a video reference. And I also got a ton of inspiration, but I think it's important before I leave that I show you a very quick stacking booth display so that you can see how all of these basics and sorting of all of the furniture into categories are gonna come into play for a stacking display. I had hoped to show you a time-lapse video of me redoing a section of my booth, but when I got there, I was asked to also be cashier for that day. So instead, I've taken a lot of photographs and a little bit of video of what I've done. I hope this helps you. This is the area we're going to be focusing on, and it probably looks okay to you now, but I think we can do more. First step was to clear the area. And if you're wondering, yes, I made a rough sketch of the display I was hoping to achieve. I knew when I started moving things around, I would have to actually redo three areas. So this was the sketch and there were things that worked and things that didn't. This is a great tool to use because then you kind of have a plan before you get to your booth. And if your booth is like mine, it's usually open and there's customer shopping when you're doing your redesign. You always start with your base. I also decided to make this wreath my focal point. And pretty funny because everything I put in that location ended up selling while I was restaging my booth. So it just goes to show you, if you move things around, they will sell. So this wreath had to be replaced. The next step were the medium bases. And I was hoping these could stack or at least one of them on the larger table. It didn't work out and sometimes that's how things happen. The nice thing about medium bases is they can also work on the ground. For me, the best display was the wood bookcase on top of the white metal table. I also slid the table that was over there out to the side. And now I've started to add smaller items. One good tip for displays are angles. Try to put things on different angles to add excitement and height. Also kind of think of the pyramid display so that your eye will travel around the display. Do you see everything we talked about? The medium bases, the stackables, the displays in this? You just kind of play around with it until you get it the way you like it. I found that moving the rack with all of my vintage linens up on top of a base really helped to draw more attention to it. And directly opposite that display, here's what we have over here. I have moved out the large spindles, added the table, and I've also relocated some of my cookbooks into those little end table bookshelves. Remember that front display that table had to be moved to the new kitchen spot, so all of those Christmas items needed a home. And actually, since I had sold quite a few things in the display, I decided to move them over to the area with the brown dresser. I removed the stackables that were on the dresser and added in some new items. I thought that the red high chairs were perfect for this and also allowed me a lot of different heights. I'm also working really hard at angles and opening the drawers so that I can put additional items in and add interest. So since the area right at the entrance was now cleared, I had to get to work. And my plan was to move in this chest of drawers. I also thought the scarf would work, but I didn't like it. The spindle I placed next to it 
And I put the cubby initially on the spindle, but didn't like that either. It's really important when you're redoing your booth to go with your gut. If you don't like it, switch it. It doesn't matter that it was in the original plan. You have to do what you like. Let me also tell you, as I worked on this display, I don't 100% love it. Remember, my time was shortened, I was working as a cashier, and I was only using items that I had in my booth for this display. Although I did use the whole concept of a base, I have the medium bases, I have the stackables on top, I used angles, I have all the items we talked about, but this area in my booth is just not my favorite. I'm going to have to revisit it. I'm going to have to tweak it. If you have those areas in your booth, and usually they happen because you made one spot really nice, you're going to have other areas that are kind of so-so, don't worry about it. Give yourself some grace, think about it, and come back to it. So that's what I'll be doing with this area. Let's review. Here's what it looked like before. And here's the after. I really think moving things around in your booth and doing more stacking can create a whole new look. It also gave me a lot more extra space in my booth, which is always needed. Are you inspired? I hope so. That's the whole point of all of this. I hope if you're trying to improve your stacking game or if your booth needs a quick overhaul, you now have some simple tools to make that happen. Thanks so much for watching. Now get out there to salvage, repurpose, and create.